Welcome everyone. This is Lauren Jane with Art Biz Secrets and we are here today with Vaughn Bielak. Hello. And uh, I'm gonna let him tell him tell you guys a little bit about himself while I go ahead and share this into my group. I'm Vaughn Bielak. I am a local Orlando artist. I'm a painter. Um, been painting for about 10 years now I think. Maybe the time is off but um, acrylics mostly, some airbrush, uh, darker style of artwork, not quite your typical Florida artist, I guess. Um, but I have been painting for quite a while. I was a musician before that, and then just came back into artwork and took it a little bit more seriously because it was more fun for me. So that's me. Okay, and you show a lot in the outdoor shows. What kind I of have shows done, are you showing? I've done a lot of outdoor events. I'm I'm switching over more into galleries and um, getting back into indoor events because it's Florida. Okay. But I have done a lot of work with um, outdoor events, uh, art walks. You know your your wine and art walk kind of situations or your um, street events has definitely been something that I've, I've used as a, a bread and butter for paying bills and keeping the lights on. Okay, awesome. Um, so I know one of the questions I had was about the outdoor shows. Um, what do you think is the benefit of, of doing an outdoor show? The benefit of doing outdoor events is traffic. It's just traffic. Um, Anything I sell at an outdoor event is essentially I'm selling the client a business card. I'm not even so much concerned about the prints that I sell there as far as like, you know, the numbers go. It's, it's about, for me, it's about um, if I can get one commission off of any live event, then that's made the event worthwhile. And so whenever I sell prints or any smaller pieces or whatever I sell at a, at a, at a walk event, it's, um, it's simply to further more business, to, to, to get my name out there, get the exposure, as I say, but like to get out there and, and sell the person a, an example of the work so that they can come back and get something else bigger, you know, something else that's got a higher price point, something that's more challenging for me to work on, um, whatever the case. I'm, I'm strictly there to promote myself and uh, get further business from people. Okay, so it's, it's kind of a stepping stone. It's absolutely right. a stepping stone. It's, it's just to get connections because I can't, I can't sell, you know, I, I can't make those connections necessarily to the wide variety you get at like an Artlando or a Earth Day birthday or, or whatever, Thornton Park, whatever the event is. Yeah, so you get more, you get more foot traffic and, and you get out there and that they know who you are, then they can, they can come back and buy stuff from you. So. Awesome. So getting eyes on the work. Eyes on the work. The networking. Worst, if the worst case scenario for any live event is that like a couple thousand people saw my stuff, if that's the worst case scenario and I don't sell anything, that's fine. Then it, then it was a success. All right. All right, that's cool. Thank you everybody that's joining. We have um, Libby Smith, Joey Higgins, Nicole Teeter, Kevin Abbott, Boris Douglas Garb, Jean-Claude Rausch. Wow, we have them all in the house. Jack I saw Boyd. my buddy Ryan in there a second ago. <laughs> Ryan Plummer's in there. Thank you guys for watching and um, feel free at any point if you have any questions. Uh, we're just kind of doing this fairly casual question and answer mostly about um, doing the outdoor art shows but anything art related that you have a question about. Yeah. Um, so, all right, and don't forget, hit the heart and like button, and that will help share this this out. Feel free to share the video itself. I'm gonna look distracted for a second okay. while I try and figure out how all to right. share it myself. He's gonna share it too. <laughs> Just make sure it's on mute. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so how many of you guys have done outdoor shows? Do you guys like them? Do you, are you scared of them? Totally don't know what to do? Um, post any experiences you guys have in the comments. We have Edison Reeves just joined. Ben Perry joined. Thank you guys for being on. Yeah. Um, all right, so I had a question as far as setbacks to doing outdoor shows. I know when you did a marketing event recently, you had some funny mm -hmm. stories about weather situations. Well, the setbacks would be that we're in Florida and we live in a swamp. Right. Uh, the, so therefore, you never know 100% what the weather is going to do. Um, that's not a reason necessarily to be afraid of things because if you're prepared, you're, you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I've lost... Tons of things at shows. I've lost. What am I on my? I've lost at least two tents. So that's like eighty a pop or whatever. I've lost. Um, you quite lost a few. the entire tent. Yeah, I just went belly up. Looked like a dead spider wrapped around a fence after the wind got done with it. Um, oh. And that's that's happened twice. <laughs> I've had uh, everything blow away. I've had everything get wet. I've gotten soaked. Your feet are if you're outdoors and you're in a, in like a park like the like Orlando for instance. They they have it set up at the park so your feet are wet all day. Mm. Yeah, so you're soggy. So that's <laughs> okay. great. Um, the weather's going to be the weather's going to be what it is. It's going to be a challenge. But if you bring, if you, if you prepare yourself and you bring like you know tarps, if you bring 
uh, plastic bags, trash bags. If you bring, um, you know, plastic bins to put stuff in. If you if you prepare, you'll be all right. Uh, a change of socks. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's something you wouldn't think about. That's something you might not think about. But right. like, if you if you think about it a little bit ahead, you, you'll be okay. The the problem for me used to be that I didn't consider all these factors. I just was hemmed up on the idea of getting the work done, getting to the event, getting set up in time, and, and it was it was a rush. And if um if I had just taken a couple minutes to get a little bit more prepared, you think about what outdoors in Florida means. Right. And you know. Yeah, stay dry. Libby says arts. Yeah, no, ants and rain at Artlando was the worst. Ants. Yeah, the ants yeah, fucking. Excuse me, the oh. ants sucked. So maybe some ant spray would be good. Bug spray is always. You <laughs> always, always. That's it. That's a, a must. Bring bug spray. Jack, in Florida. Jack Boyd says my truck smells like a wet dog inside from Love Fest Sunday. Yeah, but Jack, you smell like a wet dog <laughs> just daily. Is so. love, love Fest Sunday is not art show? I don't, know, I don't know. I think Jack is also a Love Fest himself. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe this is another joke. <laughs> it is. I'm just messing with it. Oh my god. But yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's it's definitely a, it, it's something you you just think about things like the bug spray, sunscreen. Sunscreen is something that you, you definitely want to have because you're going to yeah. be like milling around and, and it's going to get you. So, okay. Yeah. So when you set up for like um, the little like Thornton Park Art and Wine, Wine Walk, yeah. what do you think is best? To do a tent? To do a table? No, you don't want a tent. Um, so if it's going to rain, bring a tarp because you're going to at some point and, and it's going to pass. Like it's going to rain, but it's 10 minutes or whatever, you know, so it's right. going gonna, gonna to rain. Then you can be already set up. So if you bring one of those big blue tarps, you just throw the tarp over everything. Okay. Wait for it to pass. So you think it's easier to just have like a, a pop up table? Yeah. Put the for, stuff for on Thornton it. Park, for Thornton Park. Thornton Park or, or your average. You don't have the, the, the square footage for the tent. You need 10 by 10 for the tent. Yep. Um, Lake Mary has an event and they have both. You can set up with a table or a tent. They have different areas for each. Okay. And okay. that's cool. But um, in general, for like a Thornton Park, you just want a couple six foot tables and bring a tarp because you're going to need it. Jack says, always safer to have ceramic for outside shows. That's true. So, yeah, I'm sure there's certain things that do better, like uh, paintings, ceramics. Yeah, paintings, especially um, with, with acrylics, you want to make sure that you don't bring anything that doesn't have a, a seal on it, like a, a finish, so that, you know, mm. so the water doesn't affect it. But um, really, you just want to, you want to make sure you think these things through, because you're going to, it's going to get wet. It's humid. If nothing else, even if it doesn't rain, it's still humid, and it's still going to affect yeah. The work. So what I try to do is I try never to bring any of my stuff that's anything over. My my maximum is five hundred bucks for for what I bring. That way, if I if it gets damaged or whatever, I don't you know want to stab right. my eyes out. Like I'm okay. I'll be okay. All right. So yeah, what what are the price points that you're bringing? You said up to a five hundred dollar piece. Yeah, that's that's about the cap that I go with. Um, I try to have something for everybody. Uh, I used to do buttons, and I'm probably gonna bring buttons back. But like, so buttons that's are cool. like it's like you know, five bucks for a bag of buttons. Okay. So anything from $5 to 500. All I right. try to have a wide variety because you don't know what's going to, who's going to be there and whatever. And, and again, it's, it's simply about getting more business. So if I sell, you know, 20, $10 prints, really those are business cards I sold and I'm looking for one of those people to come back and, and get, right. and get the $500 piece or, or do a commission for something. Yeah. I think that's an awesome idea of like, you're basically using it as a business card yeah. that has your art on it. They feel like they got a little bit of value already. Yeah, they get a little value. They get a taste of what you do. They get. Um, it's not a big commitment, but they're starting to spend money. And where does them. your business? Where when you go to an event, where do your business cards go after the event? Where do, they, where do you put them? They put it in their wallet and then they throw it away. I don't like, even put them in my nothing. <laughs> nothing makes it in my wallet. Honestly, not even my driver's license yeah. makes it in my wallet. So what goes in where where my business cards go when I get back from an event is usually on my desk for mm -hmm. about a week, maybe a month, and then I toss them. Um, sometimes they might go into the nightstand. I think I have some in there, but I don't think I ever look at them again until, you know, until I'm remembering that one person and then I'm in a frenzy trying to find that one card and I go to Facebook anyway. So to some degree, uh, business cards can be outdated as far as a medium of getting attention. True. Um, there was an event that I did downtown for City Arts Factory one year and I ran out of business cards and I was terrified because I was like, I'm, I'm just going to be here and it's like a waste <laughs> right. to come out here. And I, um, what I did to, to solve that one was I took a piece of duct tape and I literally just wrote my name and stuck it to my chest. You're like, take a photo? I did. I said, yeah. okay. So when somebody <laughs> would stop at my table, I said, which piece do you like? Uh -huh. So they'd point something out they liked. I said, cool. Are you going to buy it now or like whatever? And if they said no or what have you. So I took the piece that they liked, mm -hmm. put it in front of me. So they got my name. 
they got the piece face. and they got my ugly face to go with so that they can That's see brilliant and later on i got more traffic <laughs> off of doing that stupid stunt yeah than i ever got off a single business card that's it, memorable. It was, I it's sold. Funny. I sold much more art after the event, but it was all because people were like, "What is this guy with the duct tape?" And they were like, "Oh yeah, I talked to that guy about a, a whatever." Yeah, that's a good idea. That's awesome. It's like guerrilla marketing. It was. It was just one of those desperate kind of hail marys. I hoped it worked, and it did. Out of desperation comes great yeah. ideas. So. That was another thing. That that event. There's um, they they also had a the other problem that I had at that event was they had everybody on uh, Pine Street and they had all the artists pushed back. So people could walk on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. But the thing was, they had blocked off the street. So nobody walked on the sidewalk. Everybody walked in the street. All right. So nobody was making any money because everybody was like way far off, like kind of just breezing by and looking. They're looking from a distance. And I, I was like, enough of this. And I picked up my whole table and I moved it to the curb. And I, was, I, I, I cleared my table in like two hours. Because I was All right. like, yeah, no. So just being ballsy and taking control of what you needed to I'm a little bit do. pushy. I'm a little bit pushy. You did what you needed to do to get your art sold and then work. That's yeah. awesome. That's really cool. Do we have any questions on here? <laughs> Should I even be reading Jack's comments? Yes. <laughs> Duct Let's... tape isn't just for wallets. It's not. Yeah. It's okay. absolutely All right. not. I didn't know where that was going at first. <laughs> yeah, I use duct tape for everything, which is another thing you want to always have with you at an event is you always want duct tape. Yeah, yeah. There's a, the, probably a whole list of the things that you just like. The other day, you're like zip ties. You zip know? ties, duct tape. Um, those things are like currency at any event. Oh, you're talking about uh, roller carts. Anything with wheels. Roller carts. Yeah, dollies. Those are important to have. Um, just the act of having a table with something that people don't think they think they're just going to bring a, a sheet and lay all their artwork on the on the ground. Yeah, that's. And nobody's going to look at that. Not so good. It doesn't look yeah. good, and it's not. Like, you know, people are going to step on it or kick dirt on it. It's not a good idea. Well, you get your, yeah, you get your artwork stepped on that way. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, you know. All right. Do we have any other questions? I'm going to look on my phone here. Right my Give computer. me some good questions, Jack. What are you doing? Jack says, I've started to offer people photo a business card on their phone. Yeah, that's a great idea. I've, I've got another friend that does that, too. He, he, um, he, he just texts them. He's got a, an image he's made, and he just texts mm -hmm. it to them so that they've got it right there. They don't even have to take anything and clutter their pockets. Brilliant. Because we're lazy. Really, we don't want to, I don't want to deal with a bunch of business cards. I wind up walking out with a fistful of them. Yeah, yeah. Flyers, flyers. I don't even do flyers. When I was in bands, we did flyers for everything, and they just all wound up on the ground. It's really just, here, throw this away for me. Yeah. You take this, and you throw it away. <laughs> ben says, look at that awesome background. So eclectic and rad. Yeah, we're coming today from... Uh, Carmine's Oddities? Uh-huh. It's Carmine's Oddities and Boutique. Uh, or Carmine's Oddities Boutique. I got to get the name right. I always mess it up. Um, I do a lot with Carmine's. Uh, they have events. They're getting ready to get a new location. But here in Orlando, it is the best oddities store in town. Um, Libby says, do you take your wall stands to these outdoor shows? Wall stands. I have um, I have grid wall that I use. And I I got my grid wall a couple years ago, and it was a game changer for me because now it tripled, quadrupled how much art I could display. Um, so I bring two sections. Currently, I bring two sections of grid wall, so I have one on either side. I can also stretch, stretch my banner behind it, and um, it, so it serves a lot of functions. And then it's also a good way because when I get everything stacked up on my dolly with my my bins, I put the grid wall on top, and then I can carry the paintings, and everything stays more stable because of the weight. So the okay. grid wall is, is super great. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. How much does that cost, roughly? Um, I don't remember how much, but like you can get it. Or something? You, you, if you get on Craigslist, you can find grid wall all the time. There's also a place downtown that I can't think of the name of that uh, they, they, they sell it. And um, if you ask around, if you go to a couple events and find some artists that have it, they'll tell you where they got it. But it's, okay. it's pretty yeah, easy. I've if you look for uh, stores going out of business, that's always a good place. Um, Goodwill will sometimes upload or unload Okay. Some of their good wall displays. Yeah, I definitely was trying to do the tent thing at like the Thornton Park Art and Wine Walk, which is about what three hours long. Yeah, four hours. Like that. Jack's yeah, asking. By the time you get it up, it's just ridiculous. Jack's so asking wall. how much is my how much my sales come from prints? Um, the amount of prints that I sell, I mean, that keeps the lights on. Really, that's that's bread and butter stuff right there. If you don't have prints of your work as as a painter, I feel like you're leaving money on the table. And you yep. really want to have a good quality product that you can that people are going to enjoy. Something that's going to last for a couple of years. I had some things early on that I tested out that didn't work out too well, didn't last. I use um, canvas for my prints most of the time, but I'm getting ready to switch over to uh, super thick photo style paper so they're glossier and the and the colors will pop better. Okay. So I'd say I don't know, Jack. I guess like 
I guess like 40% of my sales are from, from prints, but it's still that's 40% of money that I wouldn't have had just off the painting. And once I paint something, I can make prints forever. So yeah. it's, it's always there. Libby, I see you so say you have to take a taxi so it all has to fit. Um, I know one time I had to take an Uber XL in order mm. to get my art to the place because my car had been towed unexpectedly. Yeah. Um, I forgot to put my parking sticker on. Um, so yeah, <laughs> the last minute, all right, Uber XL, and it worked. So I don't know if that's what you're using. I was, I was downtown at an event one time, um, and my, my, soon, my future wife was with me, and we – had the experience of all the, my, my car got booted downtown. Yeah. So every dime I made at that event had to go to get the boot off the car oh, and take care of the parking tickets. That's terrible. So we had to walk home and then come back and it was a, it was an adventure. Yeah, you gotta make back like whatever you're putting into the cost of the booth yeah. and any parking fees or taxi fees or booting fees. <laughs> booting fees, yeah, you never know. Especially Old downtown. Fees. That's that's part of why I try and stay out of downtown is, is just in general for the, the parking people are just, it, it's a, you know, it's a racket. Kind of a, it's just yeah. a racket. They're just looking to get the loot. And if they can get your car with it, they get more out of you. So I just stay out of there. All right. All right. Um, okay. So we talked about the setup and the, the best kind of art for the outdoor shows. Um, and how often are you doing these? When I was doing our outdoor shows the most, I was doing, um, I'd say three a month. Okay. Three a month was about my, my average. I would try to do more, but it was usually three a month. It was, um, it was Thornton Park, it was Third Thursday downtown, and it was Lake Mary. Those were the three big ones that I made sure I hit. And even when I lived in Daytona for a little bit, I would drive down and hit those. Um, was there one that you found was better? Lake uh, Thornton Park used to be. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Thornton Park used to be the big one. Um, used to be. Sorry, Jason, we're not trying to dog on No, it. not at all. <laughs> he, he knows my feelings about it. The, 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 the focus on some of these events is a little different these days. And it used to be more about the art, and now it's more about the – the, the socialization, the wine and the wandering around. And that's, that's cool. It's, it's fun. And you get to see a lot of stuff still. Um, is there I'm, a way to combat that? Like you're saying at least you're getting yeah. eyes on it. Yeah. You're getting eyes on it. And of course there's a way to combat it. And it's not so much combative as in, um, you bring your own people. I, okay. I bring, I bring my own clientele. I don't, I don't rely on the event and I don't, and I try not to blame the event either at the same time. I try to have at least one or two clients coming to see me at any event, whether it's to pick something up they already bought or um, you know somebody who has been talking to me about wanting to get something, and I know that this is near their house, and come meet me there. Okay, so it's you're like great, messaging them, saying, oh, "Hey, this is going on." I, if there's one thing I believe in, it's follow up, and um, you have got to follow up with people. You got to let them know where you're going to be. You got to know when they're going to be there, and you got to reach out to them because they're not necessarily going to reach out to you. So there's a, there's a good bit of um, on the day of a show or an event. There's besides just packing the truck there's a good bit of emailing people and saying, hey, come see me, I'm going to be at XYZ. And if you don't do that, and you don't make money, then it's on you completely. It's not, it's not the promoter's fault. It's, you can't blame the events, you can't, you, you know, those are, those are easy targets, but ultimately if you don't make a sale or you don't sell some artwork at an event, there's, there's only yourself to blame because you should be able to bring people. And if you can't bring five people to an event, you need to do some other hustling. All right, all right. That's good. Anybody have any questions? Feel free to ask away. Joy should have some questions if she's still in there. I know she usually has good questions. Yeah, we have more people on now. We got Jason Frosnick. Um, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, Ala Luke, Robert Shirk, Trish Leto. Thank you guys for joining. Um, so you told me you have a book coming out. I do have a book coming what out. What is this book about? This book is called Dodging Knives and Throwing Bullets. It is eight years worth of artwork all condensed into 120 pages, I think, right now. I'm not sure what the page count is because I'm still waiting to get some, some updated information. Um, it started as uh, some friends of mine. There's a company called Blue Blood, and they are uh, currently they're doing a, a couple of different kinds of coffee books, coffee table books. But they also have some magazines that they do, and one of them is called Barely Evil, and it's kind of an alt porn goth kind of magazine. And I knew I had found out that they were getting ready to relaunch a hardcover, like a not a hardcover, but like a physical magazine instead of just online. And so I sent Amelia, who's in charge of all of that business, I sent her a message that was like, um, heard the magazine's coming back out. Would you be interested in some cross promotion? Um, you know, and I was thinking like a blurb, like something small, like just like a little yeah. this. 
And I didn't hear anything for a little while, uh, about a week or so. I didn't hear anything. And I thought, okay, she just thinks I'm this jackass. And I'm like, you know, art boy wants to get in my magazine uh -huh. again. And we've done some things. So we, I kind of had a relationship with her, but it was, it had been a little bit since we had talked. Okay. And so, um, you know, I didn't really know what to think. And then she got back to me about seven days later and had been sick. So it wasn't anything. It was just, it wasn't my, about you. It wasn't about me. I'm not, I am, <laughs> I'm not that important. And then, um, and she got back to me and she was like, not really super interested in having me in the magazine, but what do you think about a book? And I went nuts. Like I kind of, yeah. like, you know, I freaked out. I wound up in the magazine also, which was really, really cool. Awesome. Um, oh. And and then we started working on the ideas for the book and what it was going to be. And, and it's, like I said, it's eight years worth of work, but it's also um, a little bit about my story, a little bit about my life, a little bit of um, some positivity, some stuff that I, you know, some quotes that I really love from some people I respect and, and admire some, some fellow artists that have given me some good uh, direction. And I shared some of that information. Um, That's cool. So it's a little bit, it, it's primarily an art coffee table book, but there's also some stuff in there that is like, it's essentially, if I can do it, you can do it. Is, is I say, I think if you, if you boil it down, that that's kind of yeah. it. Is so it. That's kind of your main message to people in the book. It seems to be where it went. It seems to be, I can do this. I'm no, you know, no better, worse than anybody. You can do this too. Uh, no matter what you're facing. I, I had some stuff in my life that I had to kind of work through to get to a point where I was able to be productive and able to be a, a better person and, and do some things differently. Cause I used to not so much be that. And, um, okay. you know, the changes kind of were, were, they were, they were just changes. They were life changing. The so things. did you used to be an artist that didn't show as much and then something happened that changed that or no, I no. was, <laughs> I was a complete walking disaster of a human being. Okay. I was, um, well, what changed that? I stopped, I stopped drinking and doing narcotics. That's <laughs> all right. Don't do, don't do drugs or kid. do like whatever, like whatever's <laughs> working for you. It, it right. stopped working for me. All right. All right. So you, you cleaned up and yeah. just like put all that passion and energy into your art. It seemed like, I didn't have any passion. I was, I was a musician for a long time. And, um, yeah, you look like you're fresh off the, and I fell, I fell out, <laughs> I fell out of love with music for a long time. I didn't, I didn't play. I sold all my guitars. I sold all my equipment. I, I got out of that completely. And suddenly one day I just was like, where is this going to go? Because I need for this, whatever it was that was inside of me that was like the, went to the music. Where does that go now? The creativity, the, 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 okay the things that go on in between your ears, like the stuff that's got to get out, where do you challenge that? Or where do you channel that now that you're not doing what it was that you used to do to create something? Yeah. And I fell back into painting, which I'd done as a kid and suddenly had, um, just, I had a new direction. It was, it was something different, but it was still familiar enough where I was comfortable. Okay. So yeah. All right. Awesome. Yeah, Joey has a good question. Um, tell us your favorite trick to close a sale. Steal their wallet. Um, <laughs> okay, that works every time. Get that money, all of it, right away. The best, <laughs> I don't really have tricks to close sales. What I do have is I have um, some skills I picked up from talking to people that sell stuff. And Joy's actually, she's taken a class that I teach sometimes that uh, she's taken it, and so she knows a few of the things. Primarily, if you can get to where you can talk to people, you don't have to trick them into anything. You, you find out what they like. You walk them through the process of deciding that this is the thing that you have that they like and, and you put it in their hands and you, you, you give them ownership of it. Those kinds of things that, that you learn. So just selling by studying doesn't sales. have to be sleazy. It's absolutely. I mean, I love things that are sleazy, but like <laughs> okay. it doesn't, but sales doesn't have to be one of them. Sales mm -hmm. used to in my mind equals like scumbag and, and all those negative connotations that salesmen have because of the, you got the stereotypical, you know, snidely whiplash little mustache guy, and like right. he's on you for his commission and all that stuff. Doesn't have to be that at all. Um, I firmly believe that sales is being of service to somebody. Sales is being able to present something to them that they don't even know they want yet, and you and you present it in a way that they decide they can't not have it. They have to have that thing, whatever it is that you've got, and that you're the only person that can give them that item. And Joy's work, for instance, is really unique, and the things that she does only she can do. And she's the person that, that is best to present that. So to learn how to sell your own work isn't just something that's a great tool. It's an artist's responsibility to learn how to sell your stuff because otherwise, who's going to do it? If yeah. I don't believe in my own work, why do I expect you to? Why would I expect a curator to believe in me any more than I'm willing to believe in myself and put my own numbers on things and do my own 
uh, you know, footwork to get things moved and, yeah. and, and to connect and build my own following. And I know a lot of this comes from my past as a musician when I was a kid, like punk rock bands and stuff like those days, when you had to build everything from the ground up, it's the same. It's exactly the same. And if I'm not willing to do that, I cannot expect anybody else to do it. And it's, you know, it's definitely not trickery. It's integrity in art sales. Absolutely, Libby. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Integrity just as a human being. And if you have that, it's going to translate into how you present your work and how you sell stuff. I don't have to beat people over the head. Um, one of the things I do use a lot with, with sales is humor. Uh, I will harass you into buying stuff. I will um, embarrass people into buying stuff. I, there's all kinds of things that you can use. And it's not a trick. It's more of just a social, you know, making people comfortable. And they got to get to a point where they, they trust you and they believe in what you do. And they, they like your work enough to where you become a part of, you know, their lives. Your work is in their home. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Wow. And so when you're at these art shows, are you sitting down? Never. No. <laughs> are you talking to the people or are you reading a book? I'm always talking to somebody at an event. If I can get a hold of you for more than a minute, like I, I believe if I can keep somebody at the table for three minutes, that's the, that's my magic number. If I can keep you at my table for three minutes, you're walking away with some artwork. Yeah. In general. And you've got to be, if you're on your feet, you know, I know there, there's long days, but it's worth it because whenever I walk into a store or somebody's booth or something and, and they've got to get up out of their chair, I feel like I'm inconveniencing them, you know? Right. Okay. If I'm already ready to go, I don't have to get ready to go. I don't have to, you know, I got to get up for whatever reason I, I'm already going. And, yeah. the, and I think people, the, the, the more time you can remove from people's um, process of buying something, the better. Yeah, definitely. Um, we're about to have some customers walk in and be on the live. <laughs> um, all right, now I totally lost what my next question was going to be. <laughs> you guys got any other questions? Uh, oh, I know. It was something about, so he did this art marketing class the other day. I guess uh -huh. that's the right way to say yeah, it. Yeah, it is. It's definitely um, the right way to say it. And uh, what, is it, what is it called? It's called Art Always Sells. I've been I teaching, love that name. I've been teaching this class for over a year now, officially, just because it's January, not really, you know, it's not like... Art Always Sells, what a great name. Yeah, and, and I wanted it to be, I specifically named it Art Always Sells because A, it does, but B, because there's no negativity in that statement whatsoever. And if you, if you think about what an artist does, we, we're selling things that people don't necessarily need. And they, um, well, I mean, they do need it. Like, I, I know I need things in my life that are creative, and I need to have something that feeds that side of me also, so... But Art Always Sells is something I started doing over at um, Sam Flax. A friend of mine got me started doing it. They wanted me to do an airbrush class. And I hadn't been airbrushing for more than maybe like three months at the time. So it was absolutely no. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> I will not. And I, I try never to say no. But like I, I absolutely was not ready to do that. So I said no. And let me. I think I even tried to find them, some other airbrush artists. I know I sent Ryan Plummer was in here a little while ago. I know I sent Ryan there to get uh, himself a class also. Ryan just friended me today. Ryan's, I saw that he was an airbrush artist. Ryan's amazing. That's cool. I haven't seen Ryan in a while because he ducks me, but I see you <laughs> out there, Ryan. We know you're out there. I know you're out there. <laughs> I miss you, man. So let's let's paint. Um, so I sent Ryan there. And then a buddy of mine that I talked to, uh, my friend Menton Matthews, he's a painter, and um, he lives in Chicago. And he and I were bouncing some ideas around about like what it could possibly be. And I wound up bringing back the idea of an art sales class for for beginners really was like what do i bring do i bring a table do i bring lights do i bring a sheet yeah. to cover my table do i, bring... I learned a lot of that the hard way yeah the and... painful hard way like oh no i don't have a power cord oh no i don't have lights oh no <laughs> like... or, or you have lights but your light bulb burned out oh, you only had the one the like, one you know? so so now you're walking to Publix or wherever you gotta right. go or, or you're borrowing one from you know i used to uh, my friend parker sketch he uh he always has everything that anyone could ever need he's the most prepared artist that any art walker ever while, seen. So, so yeah. I could always hit him up for a light bulb and I knew like he'd have something. So that's awesome. But um art that always our art, artists helping each other out, that's always something I found really awesome. And and, and why why wouldn't we? Like there's no We're all in it together. There's no yeah. competition in, in art and, and and at live events people get this whole thing like if the guy next to me is selling and I'm not selling, then I should be upset about it. And that's not true at all. That's not at all the way to look at it. The best way to look at it is the person next to you sells a piece and you haven't sold anything yet, be grateful because money is moving like money is on its way somebody just made money right next to you so therefore it's possible that you're going to get the money next and there's no you know there's there's no reason to be yeah. bitter about so it's philosophies about money 
And I uh, mentioned people that get, the other day. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, the way people think about money has to change a little bit too. It's 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 negative. But the um, back to the class thing, art always sells. I was doing it at Sam Flax for a while, and it was great. And then um, just some some stuff changed as far as like the the classes that they have over there. So I was looking for a new location, and that was what led me over here to Karma. And I talked to the owner here, and, and James was basically like, "Yeah, bring it here," and gave me a home. Cool. So that's another event that I do here, which is what do I, I have two events I do here. I do art always sells and we do um, what we call Atlanta sketch cult, which is a, a sketch night for artists to come. Nice. I How's bring that in, work? It's amazing. Um, we just had one Saturday. So I was like back to back. I had Saturday was, 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 was it Saturday was a class? Yeah. Was, was that? Saturday. Sunday. So I'm, I'm, my days are mixed up. So Saturday we had the class. We had our always sells, which you were at, which was awesome. And then we had sketch cult the following day where we had my friend Gabrielle came over from Tampa and the, the models. So have you ever been to a sketch night? Yeah. What'd you think of it? I went to the one at the Falcon that actually ended up being about pulse. So yeah. it was actually a really emotional experience because we it? were all drawing the pulse victims. So, that, so after that, I haven't gone to another. <laughs> it's not because I didn't like emotionally it. Emotionally taxing. It was just, yeah. <laughs> so but it's my, cool. my, my experience going to sketch nights got kind of to the point where I was just sort of, I, I eventually I just got bored with it. Um, I hadn't been doing it for very long. I hadn't been going to many, but the ones I had gone to, it was always like, how do I say it? It was, it was always, it was always the pretty girl doing the pretty thing. And it was always pretty. Bunch and, of flowers. And, pfft, and rainbows. like, I mean, it boring. Hmm. Yeah. It was, it got to me, it got to be poor, where it was just same old same. Did they have models at the ones that you were going yeah, to? Yeah. Okay. And, and, but it was always, the model was always like the pretty girl doing yeah. the pretty thing or, or like the cosplay was this. And it was like, you know, and, and that's all, all of that. I'm not knocking yeah. any of those things. I'm saying for my interests and what I'm, what I'm interested in as an artist, that is only one small piece of what I'm interested in. Okay. So the models that we get for sketch cult are not necessarily that they're beautiful in their own ways and they're interesting in their own ways. I don't know if Jamie was beautiful, but we had, our, we, our models, <laughs> our models <Poor> are, Jamie. <laughs> he's, he's okay with not being oh, okay. beautiful. He knows he's, he knows he's pretty in his own way. Right. Um, but the models that we choose for sketch cult and I'm in charge of picking all the models, but I, I always bounce them off my wife, Jen to see like, if this thing's something interesting, if there's, if there's something here. Yeah. And so we have more of a, um, since we do it here at the, at the oddity store, we try to stick to the theme. Okay. So we have our next one. Well, the one after next, we're going to have like a bearded lady. Ooh. We had, um, we had Vita Devoid, who's a burlesque performer that used to live in Tampa that now lives in California. That's cool. Uh, we've had cosplayers from spooky empire doing horror themed things. So okay. lots of, lots of interesting textures and blood and what have you there and chainsaws. Right. So um, if you're looking for a really different kind of sketch, yeah, night, if you're looking for a different kind of sketch night in Orlando, Odlando sketch cult, and we have a Facebook page. Um, you can join, just let me know, whatever. But if you're, if you're an artist looking to do a sketch night, we absolutely thrive on different. We want everybody to come in and get a different experience. We, the one we just had, like I said, Gabrielle came over from Tampa and she had, it was like a, it was a, a vinyl nun mini skirt thing with, and she had horns. A nun mini skirt. Yes. And she had big horns and there was blood <laughs> okay. and um, platform shoes and, and blood cool. and there was um, lots of blood bring the red the red yeah it's pencils. not it's not it's not always gory <laughs> but we we don't shy away from right. darker themes we're we're yeah. definitely the darker themes there's a whole market for that yeah. like don't shy away from it. if that's your thing just go for it yeah. like whatever works there's for a you. lot of dark art in in orlando and not a lot of homes for it uh the the gallery i only work with one gallery currently um by choice and that is 36 black which is on south or south orange avenue just just past downtown and the owner of that gallery is his name is johnny nobody and i met johnny at spooky empire and he he and i hit it off and he had a couple of ideas and instantly i could tell that he and i were um like-minded in our artistic direction okay. we're, we're different stylistically but and he's a tattooer as well as a painter but um his ideas and his concepts were exactly what I think Orlando needed, which was a home for dark artists. Yeah, uh, Carmines is going to be doing a lot more uh, artwork stuff. We're gonna we're, we're talking about having some some gallery style shows and bringing artists from out of state and some other things. Yeah, and, it um, seems like the room back there would work well for it's, us. It's perfect for it. Yeah. It, it begs for it. But uh, so thirty six Black is is the other location that I'm I try to be as involved with as as possible. All right. Wow, that's awesome. 
I feel like we're learning a lot about what's going on. There's how much? Ton. How much does it cost to go to your sketch night? Five thousand dollars. Five thousand. Sketch cult is what is it? It's twelve bucks right now. It's it's twelve bucks to get okay. sketch cult. And you, all right, and, I guess we can do twelve dollars. <laughs> and and for that twelve bucks though, you get you get three hours of a model. You know, you get you get That's three amazing, hours. That's amazing, guys. Three hours for twelve bucks. That's um, a good deal. You can bring your own booze. Oh. You can you can drink. Uh, there's alcohol here for a donation. Um, and drinking and drawing is always something that's that, yeah. that people seem to enjoy. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I was set up for that because I think I would be too distracted by the drinking myself personally. But I that's okay now that that's. I can't drink and do art. <laughs> I mean, I can. I thought abstract I could. And fun, but other than that, nope. I, I thought I could, <laughs> but uh, no, I don't know so how much. the great artists did it. Um, any other questions, guys? Yeah, we're sitting We have here. a wealth of knowledge here. Um, a I, wealth of knowledge. Yeah. I, that's something no. I've never been accused of before. <laughs> well, now you have. That's fantastic. Um, you said something the other day that I thought was really awesome, but I don't know if it's like a secret for only your class. It had have to at do... it. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm freely all open right. sharing always. Yeah. All right. You mentioned writing down a number when you're at an art show. Okay. Now, that's a, that's a good thing, and I don't know if that's qualified as a trick or not, but... Something I think that, it's really good, and it's something that's so simple but really important. I'm a big believer in lists. I'm also a believer in um, setting goals. And so to that end, I've learned that if I don't set a goal for an event, I will probably reach that goal, which is no goal. I, I'll, be, I'll walk out empty-handed. So at any event, much like I try not to blame the event if I fail or I try not to blame a promoter if there's no traffic or whatever – I can't blame anybody but myself if I, if I don't make sales. Okay, so in that vein, I set a number for every every event. I have um, a piece of paper, and if you come look at if you come talk to me at any event, I'll show you if you want to. But I have um, I always have a piece of paper. There's a number at the top, and I subtract every sale off that off that number so that I know where I, how I did. That's my target, and then I just I work backwards, and then I see if I got there. Um, most of the time. I'd say about 60% of the time, actually, I go over the number. So I, I have like my regular number, and then I have like a retarded number, like a super number, like a, like yeah, a, like a crazy, number, right? the, the crazy number is what I have. And I'll hit the crazy number if I, have, if, I, if I have a good day with the regular number. But I only work the number. I don't work the event. I don't even work the crowd. I work the event. No, I don't work the event. I work the number at the event. And it, it's, it's, um, that's awesome. It's it's a tool that I use daily. Like I, at home doing sales online or selling work online, I have a number for the week. I have a number right now. I'm I'm actually right now I have to make to make my number I have to make $198 this week to hit my number. That's all I got left. That, all that, right. that's all I have left. That's that's So you have a goal for the week. And it's what? It's Tuesday. Keep subtracting from it. And it's and Tuesday. Then, yeah. Tuesday. So it's Tuesday. So so <laughs> So you got a little while. Yeah, I've got that's plenty a of time. Low number that yeah, you can so, really hit. So I'm definitely going to hit that number. I'm definitely going to hit that number. And then I'll go to the crazy number next. Yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. Keep and going. I, I write the number up on um, a dry erase board I have in my office, and I look at it every day and drive myself crazy. There's something about writing it down, physically writing it, and looking at it. There's people want to talk to me about. Um, I have I have my goals on my phone, or I have them in my you know in a file on my computer somewhere. You don't see that every day. What I do is I want it front and center. So like. <laughs> The screensaver, the wallpaper on my phone is usually some kind of a goal. That's like, how many times do you open your phone? Yeah. Like, I, I did day. that right times, after New Year's. I had my times? whole goals all yeah. written as my screensaver. How many times do you just look to see what time it is or like see if anybody Facebooks you or to pretend that you're about to talk to somebody <laughs> so you don't have to talk to whoever's in front of you? Right. Like, right. I'll, I will hold my dead phone to my head so I don't have to talk to somebody I don't want to talk to. I've done that before. Yeah, I've done that. I, I learned I've that. I've had fake conversations. Yeah, yeah, uh huh. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not alone. But I put my, I put my goals on my phone. So that the first thing when I flip open my phone, I see that goal and it reminds me what it was. I don't have it hidden anywhere and I need to have it in, in, in like, I've got a notebook, I've got the dry erase board, I've got that because I need to be reminded all the time because I have such low attention span that this stuff escapes me. And so now, it's positive reinforcement of the goals that you want to reach. All like, day long. All day long. All day. Because if I don't do that, then I forget about it and then I'm distracted by something and I'm like a squirrel, like I run <laughs> off to the side and I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Okay. And So I, write down your goals, take a photo of it and be your screensaver yeah. like right now, like finish watching us first and, mm -hmm. then, and then do that. <laughs> it's definitely something that works. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I, I think I'm done with my questions. Yeah. I mean, I could talk forever about art. <laughs> Joy, you don't have any more any more questions? I think yeah, you guys they, are just like quietly watching. I know, it's watching. like it froze up. I wonder oh, if it, actually, alive. it could have. Yeah? I think it yeah. did. 
Because I can't believe that yeah, Jack. Yeah, I totally did. I can't believe Jack <laughs> has been quiet that long. All right. What do we um, got? What's the longest pose? Seamless hold. Do you know what? Oh, for sketch cult, what's the longest yeah. pose? Yeah, I think that's what I was trying to ask. Um, I don't know. I give them we give we give them like fifteen minute intervals to to hold a pose, and then we let them have five minutes to to move around. Okay. So so about fifteen minutes, maybe twenty, depending on what it is. If it's something crazy, or if they have a super heavy prop, we'll try and, and give them some some time to move around, and, and maybe if their feet get numb or whatever. Uh, Jason Matthews says, when I was involved in my high school art club, we designed a shirt that said, don't drink and draw. I love that shirt. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Jason. Uh, Libby says, make sales during the week, no shows, question mark, miracle. Okay, yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. You sold stuff. How did you sell that? I things? sell, I, I sell stuff during the week. I, I'm constantly selling. I am always open for business. My phone, if you have a phone, then you are able to ring up sales at any given time. Why wouldn't you be selling during the week? I don't rely on an event. Like I said, I'm working a number. I'm okay. not working an event. If I have, if I don't have an event, so so you're selling it through Facebook or through a website I, or whatever I can whatever I can do. I mean, I will set up outside Circle K on next to my house if I have to. I don't. I'll bring a table out in the front yard. I don't care okay. because I need to. I have a family. Yeah. If I don't if I don't make my my number, then we get evicted, right? Yeah. So. So you have a, a reason, a why. I, I have a very good reason. I love having a house. I love living indoors. It's yeah, really yeah. nice. I'm sure my, but you're my not child loves to, it too. To compromise and just not at work all. a job you hate. No, and this is this falls into when when people get into the whole okay. I don't have a day job. Like my my job. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm a fully <laughs> This is your day job. I'm a fully self supporting You're working right now. I am. I'm a fully self supporting <laughs> artist. Meaning I have not had a nine to five day job for how many years for seven years that's awesome. was when i walked away from my last paycheck factory and so you are I, the example of someone who's doing it i'm absolutely doing it i don't know about any example but i know that i'm doing <laughs> okay. i'm doing this on a daily basis so so having no event has nothing to do with sales has nothing to do with sales you need to build yourself a clientele based on those those events mm -hmm. you, you get you go fishing like you go fishing there but you're always working so um, so you're getting like their emails? Oh working? God, yeah. You better. Uh, I get I get emails. I get their texts. I or I, I'll text people. Um, I have a mailing list. Like if I wanted to right now, I could send out a physical mailer if I wanted to, but it works better just to send them emails. Um, it just people and you know people throw away that kind of stuff when it comes in the mail. But I could do that if I wanted to because I have it set up to where whatever's going on, I'm going to get in touch with the people I need to. So if somebody bought something from me, you know. I just had a sale the other day where um, somebody had contacted me like three years ago about a painting and I was following up with all my, my Facebook messages and I saw this and I was like, hey, are you still interested in, in getting a painting? And he's like, I absolutely am. Yeah. Where have you been? You know, he, yeah. was, he was waiting to hear from me for like three years. So I got back in touch. I did the painting and, and we got the, got the thing handled and, and his yeah. wife was ecstatic. So, well, yeah, like I, there's this girl I saw at one of the farmer's markets. She does really cool jewelry. I forgot her name. I don't know where her card is. I don't know how to get in contact with her. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I finally, I put a thing out on Facebook. Jason Lee answered me. He knew who I was talking about. I mean, Jason it's amazing, awesome. this community. And yeah. I, I'm sure she showed in his show before is why he knew who I was talking to. Yeah. But I wanted those earrings three years ago and now I figured out who she is and now I can make it happen. Mm -hmm. So you follow never know up, how long up. something's sticking in someone's mind. They want a piece of art, but they just don't remember what your name was. Yeah. What else we got? We got a lot. Let's see. Awesome. <laughs> We've just been going a lot from what's on the screen, and that's different than what's been going on yep. in life. And Joy says, that's how you get rid of me. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the screen froze. Yeah, up. Joy. It was all a master plan. <laughs> uh, Don Moon. He just says, ha, huh, just hope that the phone doesn't ring during the fake call. This happened to me twice. That oh. is hilarious. <laughs> It hasn't happened to me. I'm surprised it hasn't happened to me, but I haven't done that in a little oh while. My gosh. So yeah, that's 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 probably. A I've only done it a few times. Just a few times. Yeah. Um, let's see. Your art is you. Tips on selling the story of you. Is that a question or is that just the statement or? I think it's a statement. It's plus true. A question. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Do you have tips true. on selling the story of you? Um, well, I talk about this a lot in my class too, and this isn't this isn't giving away anything that that wasn't given to me freely. Also, was. Um, if you buy a painting and then you take your painting that you just bought and you go and you want to show your friend and your friend says to you after you show them this painting that you're excited you just got, what, what's the first thing the friend usually says? Who did that? Who did that? Not, not what's the name of the painting, 
not anything else. It, not even like where'd you get it. Like it's usually like I'd say 90% of the time it's who did that. So the story of who you are as an artist is more important from that perspective than what the art is sometimes. And that's heresy. I know like, you know, I, <laughs> artists are like, but my work should sell itself yeah. and I'm tortured and uh, they should no. just know what it's about. They should just know by looking at it that this is my angst and this is how I feel. Sometimes they want the story and sometimes they want to know who you are. And that becomes as important as the piece because now they've got a piece of you. Like my favorite art form is photography. Mm -hmm. I love photography because literally you're selling a, a, a vision of what you see the world as mm -hmm. exactly the way you see it. And that's your perspective. And nobody else has that same exact perspective in that same moment yeah. as a photographer has when they click that one picture and that's they, cool. and they develop it into whatever it becomes. So, as an artist, you're selling something from your perspective that nobody mm -hmm. else can. So the story of who you are selling the painting, yeah. it's crucial. Well, in the way that you just said that, it makes it sound way more sexy than, I don't know, I took a photo. I took a picture. No, it's a whole, <laughs> it, there's, a, there's a whole history behind it. Like, I hate when I see a photographer post something and the first couple comments, somebody goes, you must have a nice camera. Like, <laughs> oh, rocks. the things people say. God, kick rocks with that. Like, that's the most ignorant thing you can say to a photographer yeah. and it's like no it's not yeah. about that you can have an amazing photograph that you took on your cell phone it doesn't yeah like, it doesn't oh matter. you must have nice paintbrushes uh yeah i've got great or or, or maybe i have some skills knowledge mm -hmm. no, um it's... yeah i know like i went to an art festival thing i saw this art i absolutely loved it i told the artist like i'm going to own one of your pieces and i meant it yeah and then he was kind of a jerk to me and i was like was it me you. it wasn't you it was totally me but i'm just like me. I, like I no longer wanted the pieces. I yeah. love them, but then because of who he was, I no longer wanted them. So it can go either way. It truly can. Like, don't be a dick to your customers. And if you're an asshole like that, or like <laughs> you know, so, you know, whatever, then make sure that you have somebody who can sell for you. Um, yeah, yeah. And that, put someone else in charge of talking. Put, put somebody else in charge of that because personalities can be an issue. That that's yeah. that's how, for me. I need to do it myself. That's just how I feel about it. But if you're somebody who's let's just call it socially challenged in yeah. some way, you know, like you get somebody, challenged. get somebody to hang out at your booth. Like I know yeah. that when I walk away to go get food or something, if my wife is there, she sells twice as much as I do cause she's amazing, yeah. you know, but like more, more men are going to go to the booth if she's there than I am. And, and they're going to, you know, so it's going to be a whole different experience. Yeah. So have somebody there. If you're, if you're not capable of being nice to people, mm -hmm. which I can definitely be that, guilty of that, but like, you got to put yourself in a mindset. So if you're there I, at an event and you know, yeah, I actually remember one of the first times I talked to you, I asked for a business card mm -hmm. and you refused to give me one. And you're like, you're just going to throw it away. Like either and, basically you're going to buy something now or you're just not. Yeah. And even though it was like kind of saucy, yeah, it stuck in my mind. I was uh -huh. like, he's kind of right. It's true. Like, and, and yeah, I say that I do that a lot. And, and you did it in a way a that was, it was right on the edge. It's you a weren't game. being a jerk, but you were being honest. Yeah. And it's a game that I learned. Um, I learned at bartending. Honestly, like I learned bartending was a, a good way to get me out of my shell about a lot of stuff. It was a good way to learn how to mess with people in a, in a playful way. You know, it was most, it's mostly like a game, you know, but when you're bartending, yeah. they're going to buy the product from you no matter what, because they're already at the bar, already at the bar <laughs> ain't going nowhere. You got them. Unless it's downtown Orlando, you just go next door to the you next got bar, but no, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Libby said she was having trouble finding the customers, finding the customers. How do you? You're having she said trouble. Me Too can't find the customers, but I'm not sure what the Me Too is about because this is a little while ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> Finding customers? I mean, okay, so that's the best part about a live event is that it helps you find customers, but you can't find customers at a live event if you don't keep their information. Mm -hmm. So the person who walks up and says, I like your work, and then walks off, you just lost future sales. Uh, to that situation, I would say your best plan of action is get yourself what's called a guest book. Hmm. What is a guest book? A guest book is a book for your guests. It is for, <laughs> it's something that they have at galleries at, at your, your brick and mortar galleries where if you show up to a show, you put your name and your email and your phone number, whatever, and you were at the show, you liked what the work was. And it's also kind of a, a yes, you can contact me later because I like the work. So if you have some kind of a guest book situation at your booth or at your table and they don't buy, Maybe they need those earrings that you're talking about yeah. and they can get a hold of you still. or you can get a hold of them. Then you've got their information. What you do with that information, now you get back to whether or not you're lazy or not. And if you follow up, you follow up and you make the sales. And if you don't, you don't. But finding clients and finding people to buy your work is really just about getting above the noise and the static of daily life. 
uh, Facebook algorithms and stuff make it a little difficult, but there's ways to do it. And there's always some kind of a loophole and a way to get in there and kind of like throw your stuff out and um, into the world where people see it. Uh, selling prints again, that's, that's my favorite way to do it because people, they think they're buying a piece of art, but really they are, but they're buying my business card. Yeah. Cause they're going to look at it every day. They're going to see it and they're going to be, I wonder if this guy will paint this. X, Maybe they want Z the real form. thing. Maybe they'll buy the something original. bigger. Yeah. Awesome. How much inventory do you make at a time? Are you making a piece a day? This is from Regina Rossi. A making a piece a day. I go through phases with that. I love um, giving myself challenges and I went through last year. I had a, my first solo show in like two years and I made myself do a painting a day. I gave myself this challenge of a painting a day and I actually wound up giving myself Bell's palsy because I stressed <laughs> myself out so much about it. But, um, Oh no. Yeah, it sucked. It was a whole nother. Oh, thing. you're not even joking. Are it's you? It's a whole nother thing. I oh, wish gosh. I was. Okay. Um, but anyway, so painting a day is something I enjoy doing. Currently I'm doing a painting a week. Uh, I have to, I make myself do at least one painting a week. I make myself also, um, I've switched over to digital sketching on my iPad with uh, Procreate now. Okay, cool. So I make myself sketch for at least 30 minutes a day. Usually, so maybe it, usually ones up more. is better than painting a day, like I, a little less pressure. It's the same to me. Um, okay. it, it's exactly the same to me because the process in my brain is the same. It's just once I get the sketch down, then I go to the paint. So every sketch is a potential painting. Mm -hmm. It gets me away from the fear of I'm going to waste all this paint or I'm going to waste all this canvas. There's always more paint and more canvas, mm -hmm. but if you're doing it on, on the, on the tablet, I have so many more options. I can do mm. all my color corrections. I can do everything and go directly to the, to the canvas. Nice. It saves me infinite amount of time. And it also keeps me from stabbing my eyeballs out. No stabbing eyeballs out. <laughs> Not all the time. Uh, let's see. What are some good ways to find customers if you're doing more online sales? Uh, find other artists that are selling regularly and make friends with them. Get them to talk about you. So networking, networking, find a group of artists that are similar to what you do or have a similar style or a similar outlook or whatever and build a crew, get guys together that are, or get ladies together that are like-minded. Generally you can piggyback off each other. And I promote artists. I'll promote artists just as much as I'll promote myself. If it's somebody that I love their work, um, I promote artists like David Stipakis. I promote artists like Chet Zar. Uh, I, I promote friends, but I promote people that I respect their work and people that are stylistically on the same page as me. So not in any hopes that they do the same, but it seems like they reciprocate anyway. So find people to network um, and that will help you uh, multiply your sales. All right. Um, or you're following at least. We have an older question we missed here. How do you do lights with no power and no generators? How do you do lights with no power and no generators? Battery, right? <laughs> I mean, oh God, there's um, there's some guys I know that they use a car battery. Yeah, they bring a car right. battery and they plug their stuff up to that. There's right, a converter. There's a converter you can get at uh, Walmart, um, and you hook a car battery up to it, and it'll generate anything. And if you have a, a a new car battery or you recharge it or whatever, it'll run you. It'll run you all day. Easy. People do that at, at events all the time. Um, Lake Mary, I know there's a couple people that do it. Uh, Artlando, there's a couple people I know that do it. Uh, yeah, go to Walmart, go to the tool section or whatever near auto parts, and they will have the whole setup. They can, you just tell them what you're looking for, they, they can bring you right to it. It's really pretty common. It's for camping. Okay. Sorry, uh, yeah. Jack says, stabbing eyeballs out is not good. I am seeing. <laughs> um, he also loves the guest book idea. Yeah. Libby says, uh, hey, Vaughn, want to be on my crew? Yes. All right. Yes, Libby, We're I will help the you. crew. Let's let's promote each other, Libby. I'm all about it. Is it the A team or the Avengers? Yes, all of those teams. I'm I'm all about all of the networking. Yeah. Hey, Becca. I see you just joined. Uh, Thornton Park doesn't allow generators. Yeah, I don't think so. They usually have some booths that uh, you can plug in, and other ones you can't. So you have to let Jason know what you need. Yeah. So Thornton Park, you let Jason know what you need as far as your art your art needed. Oh wait, hey, I think we just popped back up. Oh, I we're see back. I see hearts come back up. Um, <laughs> so what they do is they run a chain of of uh, you know, plugs down the street, essentially, and you yeah. you wind up terribly unsafe. <laughs> I don't know about the safety because I don't have to worry about the insurance. So I don't pay any attention to it. But uh, it usually winds up being everybody's ready to go, and we're waiting on whoever, like the last person to set up on the corner there in that spot. Because there's there's a couple of artists that I won't name that uh, <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> they're all there's a lot of people always waiting on them to get themselves plugged in, but it's okay. It all it always works out. 
All right, awesome. Uh, Jack says, I want to be in the team too in some fashion. Is Jack an artist? Yes. Okay. Jack is an artist in, in every sense of the word. He does <laughs> a little bit of everything. He's amazing. Awesome. So we're almost at the top of the hour, and I'm going to wrap this up. Does anybody have any last burning questions? <laughs> burning. <laughs> burning. Do we have any burning? <laughs> I can talk about burning. I'm oh. on fire. Let's see. Oh, we're, we're all just joining the team is what's happening. Yeah, now. everybody's joining the team. I saw, <laughs> I saw, who's that? Regina's talking about great advice. Um, one thing I want to say about that little statement, as, as lovely as that is, Regina, is I never, ever give advice. I don't believe in advice. What I believe in is sharing experience with people. Anything that I talk about, I will I'll specify if I don't know what I'm talking about usually, but it's usually some kind of an experience that I have had where I found a solution. And that's the main thing about Art Always Sells, the class that I do, is that I only share uh, solutions that I've found that work. Otherwise, I'd just be wasting your time and your money. So I would never ask somebody to come to a class where I was teaching advice. Yeah. I only want to share experiences I've had. Yeah, I don't think people should be teaching what they don't mm -hmm. know themselves. No, and if somebody's teaching you advice, <laughs> then... Beat feet. Get away from them. Oh, man, what, we got things. There's going to be another one, Libby. Um, I'm going to do them at the end. I do them every, every month. And How I'm much does that cost to go to? Uh, Art Always Sells is what? It's, that one's 22 bucks. but I also do an online version. I'll Skype with you. Mm -hmm. I'll do a Skype session with you for 60 bucks for the entire hour, and it's just you. There's Ryan. So you get some specialized help with that. You get specialized help. If you, if you want to do a Skype session or if you, if you don't want to do Skype, you just want to do a phoner, um, same, same price, 60 bucks for the hour. And I will sit there and I will talk to you about whatever you want to talk about. Um, so this might be good for you people that are across the America. Currently, I have <laughs> yeah, I have I have currently I have worldwide. I have uh, I have six clients that I work with on on Skype. Do you have um, some people in other areas? Some yeah, interesting areas. Yeah, uh, Thailand. I've got a lady in Thailand that I work with. Um, I bet that's interesting talking. To she's you. American. She just lives over there. But like, I mean, I'm sure things are different there. Not really. No, no not really. The, the questions are all the same. It's all, how do I get attention? How do I get traffic? How do I get okay. uh, money in my pocket? It's all, it's all the same. It's do just, they do little art festivals there too? She does some of that. Mostly what she does over there is she does, um, I think what she's doing is, is mostly graphic design work. And she's not even, oh. what she's looking for is how to get okay. from the corporate graphic design world into the independent artist world. And so she's mm -hmm. looking to bridge that gap. And that I can absolutely help with. That's awesome. Uh, that was one of the old questions, I think. The lights thing. Yeah. We saw Friend. people joining. Like like phoner. Yeah, phoner. <laughs> Perfect, since I'm in New York. Hey, Molly. Yeah, I'll, I, I talk to people in New York. Um, I got a guy in New York I work with all the time, and he's he's doing the exact same things that, that we're talking about here. He's It's it's about getting traffic, getting attention, because if somebody doesn't know who you are, they're not going to know your work. Oh. Awesome. Well, I think... We're starting to run out of questions. However, I don't think that'll actually ever really happen. So just come to his class mm -hmm. or, or get on the phone. I guess we'll put him. links up to all this stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. Links in the comments. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Like, Thanks for having me. A wealth me. of knowledge and experience. My pleasure. <laughs> I don't Thanks. know about the knowledge and experience, but I do my best. Guys, put some hearts and likes for him and let him know how awesome this has been. And share this video. And keep on coming back. Join my Art Biz Secrets group. Do you have any groups or pages that they should? Just find me on Facebook. I'm, I'm everywhere. Uh, I've also got vonbielak.com, um, Art Always Sells, uh, Orlando Sketch Cult, uh, 36 Black, Carmine Boutique. So they should I, probably I just like friend anything. you. Just friend me and follow <laughs> me. I use my professional and my personal pages the same. It doesn't even matter. Just, just find me. I'm everywhere. All right. So this is Von Bielak and Lauren Jane signing out. Bye, guys. Have a good one.